we had a very deep uh, partial eclipse, and I just found the photos from that. In fact, just the other day, it was pretty. It was pretty cool to to take a look at some of the students and say, oh. Those students are now in their 40s and early 50s. <laughs> yeah. Time moves on Oof, just like the solar system. Right? Watching an astronomical phenomenon right here in the Poconos. Welcome to Pocono Mountains Podcast, everyone. This is Season 4, Episode 4. I'm Jim Hamill. The excitement is really building, isn't it? The solar eclipse is coming Monday, April 8th across North America, and a partial eclipse will be seen here in the Pocono Mountains region with more than a 90% totality. There are lots of places to watch this rare event happen next week, including historic locations, nature spots, and at East Stroudsburg University, one professor has tested the proper equipment ahead of time for the student body to come witness the partial solar eclipse that afternoon of April 8th, 2024. More to come on that in a bit. The Poconos is a year-round destination for millions, with 2,400 square miles of mountains, forests, lakes, and rivers, with iconic family resorts and historic downtowns. It's the perfect getaway. You can always find out more on PoconoMountains.com or watch PTN, the Pocono Television Network, streaming live 24-7. Now, back to the episode. As I mentioned, there are a few locations welcoming the public to watch the partial solar eclipse here in the Poconos. Great Towers National Historic Site, Van Scott Nature Reserve, and others. But at East Stroudsburg University, Professor David Buckley is the resident astronomer in the Department of Physics and teaches courses in astronomy and astrophysics, and spent last Friday setting up telescopes for a test run of the viewing of that partial solar eclipse on campus for students. I sat down with him for a chat about the eclipse and some of the need-to-know info for that astronomical event that only comes around a few times in a lifetime. Enjoy. Folks, this is Jim Hamill with Pocono Mountains Podcast. I'm sitting beside Dr. Buckley. Could you uh, introduce yourself for the folks here from ESU? You have kind of been the resident uh, astronomer, from what I understand, on campus. for the last almost three and a half decades. Since fall of 1990, I came here and... How about that? uh, uh, Yeah, my first eclipse uh, uh, thing for the for the campus was back in almost exactly 30 years ago in uh, May of 94. Wow. We had a very deep uh, partial eclipse, and I uh, just found the photos from that. In fact, just the other day, it was pretty, it was pretty cool to, to take a look at some of the students and say, oh, those students are now in their 40s and early 50s. <laughs> yeah. Time moves on Oof, just like the solar system, crazy. right? It does not seem that long ago. But, wow. uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good ride here. And we were just discussing, though, this is an event that sticks with you, whether you're in the line of totality, whether you're in a partial, like this area, the Poconos will right. experience 90-plus percent. 92, right? roughly, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's neat. I mean, totality is really, I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, undersell a partial eclipse they are worth worth looking at especially i mean you have to have the right equipment uh to look at it safely but um uh seeing a partial eclipse is kind of like almost winning the lottery compared to a total yeah yeah (laughs) and a total eclipse is is winning the lottery it's uh uh when we did go to clemson in 2019 all the people around us were asking us have you seen an eclipse i said I, say, I would tell them, oh, yeah, you're, you're not going to believe how emotional an experience it is. Exactly. And they would yeah. look at me like, really? Yeah, emotional? I said, trust me, you'll, you'll see, if we get to see it, because there were clouds in and out mm-hmm. a little bit like mm-hmm. today. So if we get to see it, you're going to be so surprised how it, it just affects you. Yeah. And sure enough, it happened. And uh, the, the most amazing thing in that particular eclipse was about 30 seconds in. Uh, all the crickets and tree frogs yeah. started chirping. They did, yeah. Was and it, everybody stopped looking at the eclipse and looked at each other like, oh my God, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Yeah. And that was just like incredible. So, And then at the end of the eclipse, there were tears in people's eyes. <laughs> they were hugging and strangers were high-fiving each other. It was, yeah. And I said, told you. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, you know, you, you got to learn from people who've experienced it before. Because yeah, you... we were noobs in 2017 yeah. when that happened. My, my mom, my son and I, obviously he was three. You know, he, yeah. he, he was probably impressed by anything in that trip. But for us as grown adults, I mean, it did bring me to almost weep. Yeah. 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 And, and you kind of understand how people in the ancient world who didn't understand what was going on how they were totally freaked out by it and, right. you know, thought, oh, my gosh, is this the end of the world? Or they didn't know the sun was going to come back. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it was 
and you see that that like that hole in the sky where the sun was and then that ghostly glow around it that you've never seen before mm-hmm. and it's just incredible uh yeah, it's, it's an amazing experience. Uh, so what will we experience here in the Poconos? Because, of course, people listening to the podcast, uh, you know, certainly either visit here or live in this area. Mm-hmm. They'll see something pretty darn close to that totality, and yeah. it will still be profound, won't it? It will. It will. Uh, uh, you do need uh, either some special equipment or you have to uh, uh, find a way to get a, make a, what we call a pinhole projector. Mm-hmm. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to get a shoebox and to uh, just uh, punch a pinhole in one side and on the inside of the other side of the shoebox get a just a white piece of paper Mm -hmm. and that will be and you point it toward the sun and it'll it'll just project a little circular image of the sun but during the eclipse that that projection of the sun will it'll be like a a bite taken out of it and then it'll be more and more and pretty soon you'll see a crescent sun and uh i remember uh I remember back in 94 when we had the uh, the uh, telescopes out for the eclipse, the mm-hmm. partial eclipse uh, in the courtyard over there. The sun was, sh- because the, tr- the trees are, had leaves on them, the sun would be shining through the holes in the trees, and it made little crescent images on the pavement. Wow. So you could actually watch little tiny images of the eclipse on the pavement uh, through the the uh, little gaps in the tree tree leaves so that was really amazing yeah that's a that that is something to to think about just how it alters the perception of light right from from the heavens here yeah and uh there there are a lot of people who uh you know will hopefully plan out their day that day the Mm -hmm. the two o'clock time frame where we are right now we're a little bit more than a week ahead of time where you're testing some equipment here on on the campus for the students to observe this but people will want to kind of because block off that time frame to be outdoors uh you know safely with the equipment because it's a long process too yeah it is and uh it's it's a long slow process and the maximum is going to be around 324 325 something like that but even a half an hour before and after it's it's a very impressive thing to see um one thing to understand though is that um an eclipse isn't any an eclipse sun isn't any more dangerous than a regular sun sure it's just that when there is an eclipse, people lose their common sense and start staring at the sun. Not you know, good. The sunlight is not intensified any worse than it would be otherwise. Right. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of of people looking, staring at the sun, which is something everybody knows is kind of a dumb thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It stings <laughs> the old uh, retinas there, yeah. for sure. Um, but what, what a special place, too, for people who have uh, uh, said, you know, they're going to spend their, uh, you know, early April, you know, time frame in the Poconos. We have a lot of visitors to the area. So what a special area, too, to surround yourself with, with so many open, you know, oh, yeah. uh, wildlife lands. Like you've got, uh, uh, I think, Great Towers National Historic Sites having a hosting. Uh, up in where I live in Wayne County, they're having um, Van Scott, the Delaware Highlands Conservancy, is having an event. And so oh, cool. a lot of different locations uh, here in the Poconos are prime viewing areas for something like this rare yeah. event yeah yeah very yeah. true very true i mean i've always loved living here i mean we have, i've been living here for almost 35 years now and that mm-hmm. it's a it's a great place to live yeah, yeah. it's a great place to live really yes yeah. because nice. you can really kind of hopefully the the weather cooperates the cloud cover is non-existent of course springtime around That's, here yeah. april is uh showers <laughs> right may flowers but we really want a clear yeah. clear sky nice. for that day it would be nice that's the problem with eclipses it's uh hit or miss now, with a partial eclipse, it's not quite as uh, critical that you have perfect sure. conditions. Sure. So, for example, right now we're sitting here and it's, you would call it a sunny day. Yeah. But the sun is behind a cloud. And, and it's a big cloud. The total <laughs> eclipse, that would be very bad because it right. only lasts for about four minutes. And that's a long one. It is. The other two I've seen were three and a half minutes and two and a half minutes, respectively. You're right. And, uh, yeah. And the one I didn't see was, I can't remember how long it was, but it was, it was short enough so that rain cloud that came over yeah. ruined everything for us. So, yeah. 
<laughs> you got to be mobile, especially if you want to see totality. But here at the campus, yeah. for the students at the very least, you guys have some equipment here. Tell me about, yeah. you know, the Science and Technology Center and how you guys serve in this role of helping them understand a lot of these, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, not maybe complex, but somewhat complex, uh, you know, uh, yeah. concepts here. Yeah, well, we, uh, we, are, we, we have regular astronomy courses. Our, our physics department has an Earth and Space Science major, mm-hmm. and uh, astronomy is a large part of that. Um, we do astronomy labs every other every other year so that the students get to learn how to use the equipment and uh, and do observations, take some images, things of that nature. And so when something like this happens, an event happens, we we haul out the equipment. And in this case, we have to make sure everyone has each of the telescopes have uh, a proper uh, filtering mm-hmm. so nobody hurts themselves. And uh, yeah, so we're just kind of doing a little dry run here today. Yeah. So that uh, any kind of uh, problems with the telescopes can be fixed by the time we uh, we have the actual eclipse. So. It's an exciting time for sure. Uh, Dr. Buckley, thank you for joining us here on Pocono Mountains Podcast. My pleasure. And I hope you enjoy your viewing. I know you're headed to totality. I'm headed to totality. <laughs> but for the folks here visiting the Poconos or who live in the Pocono Mountain region, they're definitely going to see something worth talking about, yep. worth carving out a little bit of time Monday, April 8th. Around the 3 o'clock hour. Around the 3 o'clock hour would be perfect, yeah. 3, three to 4, if you can carve out an hour, yeah. you'll see the most, uh, the most of, the, uh, of the show. Yeah. Well, exciting times. Uh, folks, head to PoconoMountains.com. There's a couple events that are listed under our events section for uh, various uh, viewing locations, including Great Towers, as I mentioned, uh, Van Scott Nature Reserve, which is part of the Delaware Highlands Conservancy, and plenty other state parks, national parks, and other things throughout the Pocono Mountains to experience. Something that only comes around, I think right. this is one thing that I forgot to mention or forgot to ask about. Mm-hmm. This doesn't happen again here in North America for quite a while. A total eclipse doesn't happen again for another 21 years. I think it's August of uh, 2045, mm-hmm. so, uh, so that's a while. Yeah. And, but there may be a couple, of, uh, a couple of partial eclipses in between now and then, so okay. I have not checked on that. But uh, yeah. uh, certainly not as deep as this one is, so yeah. Well, I'm excited. You're excited. And thank you again for joining us here on the podcast. My pleasure. Thank you. Professor Buckley, one of the many great members of the faculty at ESU, talking about the exciting and breathtaking solar eclipse happening April 8th. You can find some events for viewing the partial eclipse in the Poconos. Head to PoconoMountains.com to learn more. Thanks for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. We'll have a new episode each week highlighting lots of the fun things you can experience while you're visiting the Poconos. Subscribe to Pocono Mountains Podcast and leave a review and or comment on whatever platform you listen. Celebrate our great restaurant scene and our chefs that make it happen during restaurant week. Enjoy. The Pocono Mountains is the best when it comes to creative food and beverage. Why not try something new? Or sample our international flavors mountain favorites. These are the most delicious weeks of the year. You just have to know when it is. Visit PoconoMountains.com. We're back. Thanks for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. I'm Jim Hamill. Now for a Pocono Mountains Podcast Extra. You heard just now the Taste of the Poconos Restaurant Week is happening this month starting Sunday, April 7th. We're featuring a bunch of the 40 plus restaurants participating in the week of special menus and deals, including Settlers Inn and Crazy Country Club heard on the last episode of the podcast, and now the Frogtown Chop House, which we had back on the podcast in 2022. Here's a listen to that conversation with the amazing Eric Noon and Lyman Winter from two years ago at the Frogtown Chop House. Enjoy. So welcome back to the show. This is your host, Jim Hamill on Pocono Mountains Podcast. I am in the wine Cellar, the wine room. What do you guys oh, call it? I wish it was a cellar. It's the a wine room. Closet? Closet. Wine closet. I'd be sick if it was a cellar. It would be wicked cool. Oh, yeah. if we were like like 15 steps down. To, <sighs> oh, that'd be great. I know. You start, oh, let's you imagine start, we're like start somewhere. We can imagine we're yeah. in a yeah, cellar. Just, somewhere. just start plotting that out. 10 year plan. 10 year plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> start, start digging. <laughs> start digging now. Yeah. But we are in the wine closet. Yes. Yeah. With Eric and Lyman from Frogtown Chop House. Yes, the Frogtown Chop House. The this hey, place buddy. is fantastic. Thank you. And did Thank you guys you. hear the difference between ravioli and raviolo? Did you hear? I did not. No. Yes, one. Yeah, it's ravioli. One is sing- oh, it's ravioli just... is singular. Oh. 
Oh. It's ravioli. So that totally ravioli. Ra- the total randomness that Lyman just did right there, since <laughs> this is another, we just did a no podcast context. with you, Jim. No right, absolutely <laughs> did, yeah. And that was the end of the podcast, so now he's bringing that into this See, one. See, that, that's uh, synergy right there. Perfect. We're trying to bring uh, listeners across platforms. Across platforms. Platform. Absolutely. Yeah, if, you hear, if you want to hear the setup, you have to go listen to our podcast. <laughs> right. There and you then you come back for the answer. One Perfect. hand washes the other. Love that's it. it. Thanks for joining me, guys. We just uh, talked a little bit about me, but now I want to talk a little bit about you guys. How long you been doing this? You're in the industry. You haven't gotten out yet. It's something that's a passion of yours, clearly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a passion for me. I'm 20 years. No, yeah. once you're in, you can't. You never <laughs> know. Extremely passionate. I just, you know what? I, it's a perfect example. It's great to talk to you right after. So we just had a Saturday night that was pretty epic here. Yeah. Um, oh. And I, uh, uh, it was 7 o'clock, and I'm sitting in the office. I was making a phone call. It was very busy, but I was just making a quick phone call. And one of our hosts comes back and says, hey, Eric, um, you know, you, we need you out front. I said, oh, you know, I'll be out in a few minutes. Just to our, our AGM's name is Kate. Can I set this up real quick? This yeah. is like he's, he's about to tell you like a disaster story. Correct. Oh, I love the and disasters because it's like it, reality. This is like one of those like like panic moments. So mm-hmm. he's he's leading into it very casually and calmly. <laughs> so prepare yourself. Like, yeah, prepare yourself. It leads to like a panic where most people yeah. wouldn't know what to do. And would probably just cry and run away. This is where Eric, you know, sort of runs towards the burning fire nice. to save the baby. Where, where a lot of people would just run away. Run away so so she says. So, so I said, seven o'clock on a Saturday night. We ended up doing 170 guests. Oh. It, you know, and that's that's a decent number. We've that we've hit 200 is like when it gets wild. 170 yeah. is busy for when there's no deck. You know, 100. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, there's no deck only, outside, yeah. so that's 20 seats. Yeah. Um, so every seat is there is no and, more seats. And that's seats. between five and probably the last seating. I'm guessing was nine nine fifteen. So in four hours you do that mm. volume of guests. Oh yeah, buddy. In and out very efficient. <laughs> Everything's mapped out for right, the night. Right. At seven o'clock, our our lead host. Sammy walks in and says to Eric. Yeah, so I, we need, you know, I need you to come out. Uh-huh. You know, she said it very calmly. And I said, oh, hey, you know, um, uh, Kate's out in the rest, our AGM is out in the restaurant. Just grab her. I'll, I'll be out in about five, six minutes. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand. This is a, this is a you thing. Oh. And I kind of saw that, you know, she's got that facial expression. She, <laughs> now, now I know that the there's, eye yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah, you know, there's no yeah. color in her face. She's like white. <laughs> So I walk out and the, our, our staging room, you know, where the host is, is packed, which is very normal. Right. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So I slide into the computer and I go, what's going on, Sammy? So, oh, um, these guests right here are, had a reservation for seven o'clock for one guest. I'm like, oh, okay, perfect. You know, no perfect. problem. Um, they're here with 15. Oh, the five, like, the five, the, the, the one five, the five of the one. <laughs> was missed and they are stand and now you, and you see it right away so i try to control the face as if we'll just make it work Th- then the panic starts setting. you can just kind of see it to my right and my left that there is nothing we can do um oh, no. but you go and you, what <laughs> this so, is where you become a really good actor really quickly because if all of a sudden you're like oh wow oh Ooh, yeah man, uh, uh, then, they, oh, then they then they, then your guests start oh can i uh-huh. curse oh, on your sorry. podcast sorry. They'll, they'll bleed oh, it. I shouldn't curse. <laughs> no, it's they'll okay bleed. that's okay i'll bleep that okay. so <laughs> I just went into speaking of this. This is where it goes. This is 20 years. You know, like when, when we debriefed after this, that was the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they all said I, we never would have done that. You know, so what I did is these tables that are right here that we're, we're podcasting on yeah. are our deck tables. They were filled with about nine inches of snow. Oh. I, I went immediately to two friends that were eating dinner and I said, hey, um, we're going to move you to the bar. I have a nice seat at the bar. Yeah. You know, I'm going to buy you dessert and a little and a cocktail. If you don't, would you mind moving? And they very good friends. Thank goodness. Yeah, that's so perfect. I didn't have to really, je ne sais quoi, move them, brought out deck tables, took chairs from the rooms upstairs. Nice. Uh, that that have, have kind of worked their way into the room scheme. I went to <laughs> Josiah and one room was taken. He knocked at the door and they said to the guest, may we take a chair? And we uh, sat that 15 top in about 17 minutes. Whoa. And then from then on, so from seven till nine thirty, every table thereafter had to be switched. So you oh. would you were you were switching because it never ended. Right. Uh, but it was a, it was a domino effect. Right. Like yeah. it, I like to call it, it was ripple effect. The ripple. ripple. It was incredible. Uh, the debriefing at the end of the night was excitement. Yeah. The, um, I live for that. That's that was one of the hard. That was one of the most extreme moments in twenty years. And that's like testimonial right there for like why you're in it too like oh. like it's it's, it's never those, the same those never, people never went, could have left with like the worst experience oh the worst and and like that would have had a ripple effect of an opposite well right to google review yeah. right yeah. to google yeah. right oh, to yelp got another one right to google trip. review i can't stand people on their <laughs> reviews that was me sorry guys yeah, yeah she's, 
bastards. Yeah. I don't know. People don't understand how reservations work and the system and processes that are in place. You only see what's in front of you. So yeah. if you've never worked a day in your life at a restaurant, you just don't understand. And then it, you're either a gracious mm-hmm. and patient person that can sort of roll with whatever, or you're not. And then the no combination care. of right. like not knowing and not caring makes you like a nasty like review person. This, this, this woman reviewed and she's like, we had a table by the fireplace by the window that was drafty. Well, okay, it's a, it's a million year old house. So there's a little draft. And she, it's she, literally She asked to move to another table degree. and the host oh, yeah. was like. Like legit cold out. You mm. know, when it was on a weekend night, she's like, she's like, and the host told me I couldn't move and the table sat empty the whole time we were there. And, and you know. It and ruined you, my night. And right. you know. And you know the host was well very gracious. Or that was it, right, and you know right. that there was a table coming in. They don't understand that if your, your reservation was at five o'clock right we leave a two-hour window okay so they may have had the reservation at 5 30 and there's a table reservation on the empty table i'm doing air quotes, the empty table at like 6 45 or 7 so they may very well have eaten been in and out from 5 30 to 6 45 they may have eaten quickly and don't see that table coming in yeah but in their mind the the host was rude and right. didn't seat me at this empty table that they have. Yeah, and then, the, and then the one time you don't, oh, yes, we'll move you. Well, then that table comes in, and it's a four-top. Right. Uh, hi, can you, hey, hey your time's up. Yeah. You know, then they hate you for that. Uh, Give me a break right. with these so reviews. We lost her. It was her second time here. She said she was disappointed twice. Yep. Well, you guys keep lost coming her. back for more, right? You, 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 <laughs> Just you've keep. survived thus far Yeah. the the pandemic, mm-hmm. um, which is probably in its own right. like Oh, very humbling. Yeah. That was a humbling experience for us. And I know we've come in, you know, and you guys have said that, like we, we've appreciated the people who've been steadfast as far as customers go and, and our team that's kind of shown up over this entire time. And I Guest, mean, guests, guests, Jim. guests, we call them guests. Not, what'd you what'd call them? What do you what say? Clients? Customers? Customers? <laughs> customers. Oh, God. Sheesh. Uh, that's patrons? A, that's our, patrons our huge a thing. Yes. That's guests. one of my, Only? that's one of my culture things. Uh, when you're very, in, when you're here, yeah. everyone that walks in this building is a guest. A guest. Of yours. It's a good movie. But you can call them whatever you want. Right. No, it does. That works quite well. Thank you. So getting to now from where you guys started out, did you guys ever expect the Frogtown Chop House to be like such a wild success like it is? I mean, you'd hoped. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I mean, if I'm trying to like yeah. stay humble a little bit, but not, I think so. I think mm-hmm. Eric and I knew right off the bat we had a pretty winning combination. Yeah. Um, pretty early on. Yes, I think when he was in the front and I was in the back. Oh, that sounds really weird. <laughs> when he worked in the front of the restaurant right. and I was in the back of the restaurant, um, I think we knew right away that we had a, a pretty winning combination. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we just you know just grinded to build a team so that we didn't have to stand in the front of the house and the back of the house all day. Right, right. And it took years, six years, six, seven. Mm-hmm. To get here and then Seven and then years. COVID, yeah, and then and COVID. then it totally put you and right to day COVID, one. Right. As if we opened the door, you yeah, might yeah, as well you start. might as well have said to us, "Hey, congratulations! Here's day one, grand opening." Hey, you guys told yeah. me that story when we were in here yeah, about a year that. ago. Like, you looked at the bank account, and oh. there there was like literally two hundred bucks, oh, couple hundred bucks. bucks on a Friday morning. On a Friday morning, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then you start looking at your finances, and you're like, "Oh man, I don't really have that much money." If I <laughs> yeah, how much can you? Like, I really didn't. You know, I since then the restaurant's been good, and we've been able to build and mm-hmm. and you know get our nest egg up again with yeah you. yeah rebuild the nest egg a little bit and things like that but it was very dire it was like you know but but here's the saving grace here's what did not make me go crazy although i experienced quite a bit of anxiety through a lot of that yeah um which is unfortunate and there are some people that are still very much dealing with the anxiety from sure you know the pandemic um is that Eric and I, as humans, have created a, a, a larger net of team around us, family, friends, that if, if this place had to go away, I could fortunately get a job probably pretty quickly and, and in my price range, whether it was what I wanted to do or not, you know, it's different. Eric could yeah. walk out today and find a pretty good job, I'd say, within a matter of weeks, and that's because of... Um, you know the the community we've built around us, the friends, the family, the the loyalty, the you know I don't know 
I think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Just treating people nice. Treat, taking care of people. It goes people. a long so way. So you did have that fallback if, if you need. You do, but, so but we, we never really does. explored it, but yeah, and but I looked. I know. Right, but yeah. like I said, but, my, then, but, but the problem was the 25 other mm-hmm. people that work for us may not have that. Well, they definitely would not. No, have had that not. option. No. Some of the no. Especially because they're all restaurant people. Restaurants at that time weren't, there was no high. We, yeah. we can, my Zero bartenders hiring. are going to leave here and go to a bar. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 that's not scary yeah. for a lot of people. Scary. And that has, a fa- the restaurant industry is as, if not in the same position it was two years ago, this industry as a whole. And it's now with staffing. Um, it's now with the right pro- product price. Yeah. Um, it is, we are, we are nowhere near. Um, and that's why there's a lot of advocating, um, for restaurants. Speaking of in Philly, yeah. New York, that right. do it with these vac with the vaccine mm-hmm. mandates where they have to show vaccines are dying. Yeah. The restaurant industry is scary. So we, I'm on calls all the time trying to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. So support, please support your local restaurants. And Did bars. I hear that there are countries that are lifting those mandates? England is all lifted. There's oh, yeah. zero okay. mandates. Yeah, you don't have to show vaccination status anymore. Not in England. And and they're saying now that this whole thing is going to peak sort of mid February and the right numbers will go around. away and yeah. we will uh, Which is fine, but but then I but then I again I look at it, see so that's yes. Will will COVID end well it'll never end, it'll just be like the flu for the rest of our lives. Right, right, we know that. Right. I think that's what we gotta just understand that. But it's not gonna bring is it gonna bring staffing back to this re- the restaurant industry? I you, think work, you work holidays and weekends. Right. Right? Right. Incredibly oh, long don't, hours. Don't tell everyone. That's <laughs> what we hear about. Incredibly <laughs> long hours. Reality is kind of reality. Very, very f- benefits, very few and far between. Mm-hmm. Paid vacation, very few and far between. Um, you know, it's time that we figure out how to get this. I because I'm sick and tired of when people say, "Well, it's you know, it's kind of an in between place." No, I have career per- people that work here. Oh, we have career people. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, definitely. So we have to. This restaurant industry has to start being taken seriously, and by bringing in um, paid vacations, time healthcare, off, healthcare oh, yeah. would be. Yeah, yeah. elevate the game we, got, a we, bit we have to. Yeah. We have but to. But it's yeah. unaffordable as business owners. It's unaffordable. I can't. You don't make much I margin on no. anything other than liquor. No, Zero. Right. Well, you know. touche. Well, and yeah. unfortunately for us, Eric and I make pretty much zero margin because again, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound, you know, great or anything, but we pay our team very nicely, very fairly. We always, we, we try and treat them well, you know, so we spend a lot of money tr- treating our team well, which in turn helps us. Yeah, so there, us. there are yeah. selfish motives behind that, but it really makes our, our margins kind of non-existent. Understood. I mean, we could be cheaper. Yeah. We could, you know, well, and we're a steakhouse. Tighten up things. So the price of meat, you, you know, how much can we put on a steak on that plate that you'll still come eat the damn thing? Yeah. We just talked about pricing today. <laughs> right. We're just it's looking at it. It's a tough gig. Well, that's why I, I figured you guys, you know, for your podcast purposes, you know, that, that's fun and entertainment value. But for our podcast especially, we want to be like pretty informative too. Right. And, and you guys are on that forefront of like the issues facing restaurateurs <laughs> and, and, and the industry as a whole because... Um, it is changing by the day and it's just so different. It's, it's necessary to kind of have these frank and, and honest discussions so that people who attend our guests <laughs> yes. at your restaurant <laughs> have a better understanding of what they're, what they're going into. They're not going into like restaurants of like the, the early two thousands. You're absolutely like, right. Like the game has changed. Entirely. And the same thing when I, when I was a bartender in Manhattan, mm-hmm. I was a celebrity. Oh yeah. I mean, we, Oh, it was the coolest industry. I, you know, I was, I worked at a really, really well-known bar. Um, you know, you, you networked, you know, we were, you know, you were auditioning during the day. Uh, you know, you were maybe doing theater as well. It was such an eclectic group where, you know, we're like a subsidiary of society. It was like so cool. You know, you'd, my bar was always open till five, uh, 4 a.m. Last call was 4.15. So we would get these major industry models. It was just an unbelievable. It was wild. Yeah. It was wild. And then, you, you know, then COVID... <laughs> made the restaurant industry very less sexy because it can go away. Yeah. It can just go away. Done. You shut down. It's on the front you lines know, of that, you know? Yeah. And, and frankly, the loudest, the loudest voices are the ones that are usually like kind of the rudest and like the least considerate. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if they care about hearing about the numbers or that kind of stuff. They kind of just want to keep on in the world of being miserable. Some people just want to be miserable, right? Yeah, yeah. But well, I think that, you know, no doubt about that is that's 100 percent true. But there's another big change that's starting to happen um, in the restaurant industry. And I like this one a little bit. Keep it in 100 is that we used to always do the old adage. The guest is always correct. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. that's not true anymore. We're, 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 we're moving past that. Honestly, little bit, we're moving past know? it. And especially because um, folks who have restaurants have had to take that stand. You know, where it'd be on. Uh, yeah, you and we're cannot talking treat about people that way anymore. Mental, mental health issues yeah, are, are per- very pervasive now, too. Everybody's been living under some very stressful times. So, like, it, it's not necessarily understandable, but it's certainly not acceptable. You're screaming at yeah. my not accept- GM. Not accept- You're screaming anymore. at my GM Sorry. because you don't like your Cosmo. Oh, uh, no. Ma'am and sir, mm-hmm. out the door. I, I don't even want, I don't, I'm not even going to d- talk to you. The price is wrong. Yeah. Out, yeah. <laughs> out the door. Great movie, by the way. Yeah, right. Happy Thanks. Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah. Out the door. Yeah. No more. I'm not. Yeah. De- well, I'm very sorry. Dude, if you start, she called, I think called it a B word. Uh, that's when Kara said, our GM, out the, I don't You're even done. talk to you. Because here's the bottom line we will do whatever it takes to make your experience enjoyable mm-hmm. and. Um, and worth it, like uh, uh, um, what, what's we'll, we will bend over backwards to make your experience go. What, what, what am I? What's the phrase I'm looking for? We used to use it all the time. Uh, uh, um, uh, perceived value. Mm-hmm. We want right. your perceived value to be very high, yeah. and your experience to be good. We we are an experience restaurant, right? Right. Not the fanciest, not the most expensive, not the cheapest, but we will offer an experience from the minute you walk in to the minute you walk out. Right. You get a high. You get a goodbye. You get a lot of people stopping over to make sure you're doing well. And if something is not to your liking, we'll fix it. Sure. If it takes us three times, it takes us four times. We'll get it right for you. Mm-hmm. But man, we will no longer allow you to be rude to any sure. of our team in order to get to that experience. Now, I understand you may be disappointed. <laughs> you may be frustrated. Just like my children, you may not <laughs> be mean. Period. Nope. That's, that's yeah, it. We're done now. with it. I won't you can be it. like, it's just like I tell my kids. You can be upset. You can be... You can be angry, you can be sad, you can be disappointed. All those things are very acceptable. Being mean slash rude, unacceptable anymore. Yeah. Eric has escorted people out because they couldn't handle being in society. <laughs> we're humans, serving other humans. We're, we're, we're like Christine says, we're ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen. If you're not a lady or gentleman, you're out. I don't need, I Understood. don't need your business like that i need how I need serious seats filled with people that are here to have a good time yeah and we're human we make mistakes it Indeed. happens and let's keep it real it's yeah. food and beverage man yeah dude yeah. if you're at a hospital and a person gives you the wrong medicine oh that's a problem there's, now we're having yeah. now we're having a problem legit if your pilot is tired or sleepy or drinking and you're flying we 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 got a problem here, yeah. you know, if, if, you know, they didn't check the engine correctly, whoa, 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 you know, but, um, you know, my, st- your steak came out tough. Oh, okay. We'll get you a new one. We'll sure. cut, sure. But I, I guarantee you my call, my, any one of my calling managers didn't do that on purpose. Meat, meat is a, they all are different. Every meat, oh, every cow is yeah. different. Yeah. There's going to be a fat line, a fat cap. Was it missed? Did we miss under temp, over temp? There, I, I can tell you with 100% certainty, there's not one guest that walks in here I don't want him to be 100% mm-hmm. satisfied. Mm-hmm. There's not never one. There's never been one. Yeah. So, what, you know, just be gracious. Yeah. yeah. You start yelling. Done. I, 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 we won't deal with it. So come check us out. Um, you know, we're, we'll be, ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Love it. Lyman, Eric, thank you very much. We'll be, uh, we'll be back to dine and awesome. wine whenever yeah, we can. Perfect. Yeah, dude. Cheers, Thanks, buddy. The Frogtown Chop House, one of plenty of restaurants you can check out with special menus and discounted items for the week of April 7th through the 12th during Pocono Mountains Restaurant Week. Head to our website, PoconoMountains.com, to learn more. We hope you enjoyed the Pocono Mountains podcast. Please remember to subscribe anywhere podcasts are available. Come visit us in the Pocono Mountains. Plan your trip today. <laughs>